Let's take a look at how this Batman was produced with a custom cape and some custom paint. And yes, we will answer the question how that grapnel is up in the air. Thank you for returning to the channel with Ink Drop Customs and let's get started with the list for today. We need a figure from the movie, The Batman, and we will custom repaint the eyes. And of course, a custom cape is due here. Shading is going to be done with an airbrush and we will touch base on how that grapnel is up in the air. Bienvenidos a los que regresan a este canal para figuras custom. Necesitamos la figura de la película The Batman. Vamos a pintar los ojos, hacer una capa custom y hacer las sombras con un audiógrafo. Y sí, contestaremos la respuesta como el gancho está en el aire. Comenzamos. The figure that I will be working on today is a collaboration with The Bat Maniac, and he provided the figure to be worked on on this episode. So today I have the possibility of showing you two versions of the same figure. If you want to collaborate with me on one of these episodes, contact me below in the comments, and we can work out some details for you to be a collaborator on the next episode. Let's get started. As with any other figure, you must disassemble the entire figure for you to get into those areas that need paint and to remove specific portions to paint them. And yes, it is important to do so if you want it to look like it's a factory made product. Igual que todas otras figuras, es muy importante desmontar la figura para que puedas pintar las zonas que son difíciles de llegar y quitar las piezas que son requeridas. A la vez, es mucho más fácil hacerlo y se ve como es algo que sale de fábrica. De otra manera, será muy difícil hacer el trabajo que piensas tener listo o presentable. Just a quick reminder, with any of these figures, whether you get them fresh out of the box or you've had them for a while, it is always recommended to heat them before you start disassembling. That way the soft plastic does not become brittle and breaks as you manipulate it. Breve recordatorio, si tienes esta figura fresquecita salida de caja o que ya tengas tiempo con ello, Siempre es aconsejable calentar la pieza para que el plástico sea blando y no sea frágil al desmontar las piezas. So now that you have the cape off, you're going to plug the back with a piece of styrene and then cover that with the epoxy sculpt. Wait for it to dry, sand it, and paint it. Una vez que tienes desmontada la capa, puedes llenar ese hueco que tiene la espalda con una pieza de plástico o llenarlo aún con masa y esperar que se seque, lijarlo y entonces pintarlo. So I do have a chapter or a episode dedicated solely to painting eyes, but I will give you a recap in this one. But the tool that you're looking at here is 
really, really crucial as far as painting these eyes. If you don't have one, I recommend you get one. If your eyesight is great, that's nice, but you'll find it easier to have one of these magnifiers at hand. Ya tengo un episodio dedicado a solamente repintar los ojos, pero recalquemos unos puntos aquí. Pero esta herramienta que ves aquí, esta lupa, es sumamente indispensable para poder hacer este tipo de trabajo. Si tu vista es excelente, qué bueno, pero lo harás más fácil con esta herramienta. So using a quadruple zero brush, you're going to mix in your paint, a light gray, to paint the eyeball. Then you'll pencil in the actual pupil, and then you will paint over that pencil line the actual color of the eye, finishing it off with the highlight, and then once that is dry, then you can cover it with a clear coat to make it look wet. Con un pincel de tamaño 000, entonces podrás pintar los ojos. Mezcla un poco de pintura blanca con negro que sea un gris muy claro y entonces puedes pintar la base de los ojos. Sobre eso cuando esté seco usas un lápiz para hacer la punta o entonces la pupila. Y una vez que tengas eso puedes pintar de color los ojos de tu uh, gusto y entonces cuando eso ya esté seco pintas el reflejo de los ojos, el puntito blanco finalizándolo cuando esté seco con un sellador que sea uh, transparente y brilloso. Así tiene la apariencia de estar mojado el ojo. So I had a few questions on Facebook as to how this was done. Let's take a look. Tuve algunas preguntas en Facebook en cuanto a cómo logré hacer esto con el gancho. Veamos cómo se logró. So working on the grapnel gun was actually pretty simple. It's nothing more than a 26 gauge wire that is glued into one end of the actual grapnel gun and then on the actual hook or the grapnel itself. Let's take a look. Esto se logró mediante tener un alambre de calibre 26 que está pegado en el arma y está pegado directamente al gancho con pega loca. Así es que también tiene un imán que lo sostiene en la palma de la mano de la figura. You will have to drill out the very end of your grapnel gun to be able to apply the wire securely with super glue. And then you'll do the opposite to the actual hook that is going to be also attached to the other end of the wire. Así es que con un taladro sumamente pequeño perforas el disparador en la punta y entonces vas a poder pegar 
este alambre de calibre 26 con pega loca y harás lo mismo al lado opuesto donde está el gancho y lo colocarás en la otra punta del alambre que has ahora enroscado sobre una superficie redonda y así determinando de qué tan largo es el cable puedes hacer la rosca necesaria. So remember, I will be displaying two figures in this episode. This is the second grapnel gun that I worked up for the second figure. You can now have a closer look at what it looks like. En este episodio tenemos dos figuras y esta es la segunda pieza con el gancho que he arreglado para la segunda figura. Ahora puedes ver el resultado final. So by now some of you are aware that this figure comes in two versions. The one with the cowl in the back that presents a problem because it's actually glued to that collar. And then the other version that does not have it, which makes it a lot easier to attach a custom cape. And you can see on the left that that collar is entirely all on its own, which makes it that much more workable. So I do have a few episodes dedicated to making capes. I won't touch base on those here because I already have those videos. You can return and watch those off of the playlist. I will show you in this the two different techniques that I used to apply the cape once it was actually customized or fabricated. So in the first technique, the trick was to make the cape look just like the plastic one that came on top of it. And the best way to do that was to turn the material upside down, inside out, and then drill two small holes to make a custom clip to hold it in there. The armor is rubber, so no glue was needed to hold it in. En la primera técnica de cómo colocar la capa, quería que se viera igual como la capa de plástico que vino con la figura. La mejor manera de hacerlo después de hacer la costura es voltear el material uh, boca abajo al revés y entonces perforar la armadura y poner un alambre que lo sostenga, algo como una grapa. Y entonces quedó precisamente como el plástico que venía de caja. So this is the first figure and the cape is already finished and attached and I've attached it just the way I mentioned it earlier. I made a small clip that goes into the armor and securely holds the end of this cape to the figure. The back is glued right underneath the collar so it's very simple. There are four wires in this cape and that's what gives it its shape. On the ends, there's one wire here, second one here, third and fourth on the far left. And those ends are not sewn, those are glued down and it makes for a much cleaner look on this figure. But let's take a look at the figure once it's actually made to look like the movie accurate figure. That's technique number two. Let me show you. Así que aquí tienes versión número uno ya finalizada, terminada. Se ve como lo que salió de caja. El cuello está en punta sobre la armadura. Y esto fue difícil porque era poner dos grapas, una a cada lado y pegarlo con pegadura detrás de la nuca. Now if you're going for screen accuracy, then you need to have this technique down. Let's remove the arms to be able to pull away some of this armor. And that's because the cape actually comes from behind the armor. Ahora, si tú quieres que tu capa se vea exactamente como el personaje de la película, entonces necesitas esta segunda técnica. Y lo que necesitas hacer es remover parte de la armadura o si quieres removerla por completo 
y ahora tienes que poner la capa detrás de la armadura para que se vea tal como la película. Now we're not done yet, we're only halfway there. We gotta fix the collar on figure number two that has the cowl attached. For that, we have to make our own collar out of the cape that we removed from the figure, cutting off the edge and only using a portion that looks as close as possible to the original. Así es que todavía no terminamos. Tenemos que arreglar el cuello de la segunda figura para que se vean igual. Entonces tenemos que cortar la orilla de la capa que hemos removido y entonces pegarla para que pueda tener ese mismo aspecto que la otra figura. So creating the battle damage is a decision you have to make because once you do it, it's permanent. You're not going to be able to send it out on this soft plastic. Decide precisamente donde quieres el daño de batalla porque una vez que lo hagas ya no lo puedes hacer reversible. Esta es la técnica que usé y tengo un video dedicado a esto. So we're going to be doing the shading only using the airbrush. I've loaded it with black paint and I'm only going to be applying it to the crevices between the armor plates. That is going to give the overspray on top of each one that shading or look as if it is actually three dimensional. And then we'll go back in and paint the details. Un audiógrafo es esencial para hacer estas sombras para que se vea de tercera dimensión las placas que tiene la armadura. Entonces regresaremos y con un pincel o una brocha de mano haremos los detalles que están sobre el daño de batalla. can see accuracy is not key here. The important thing is to provide the overspray on both edges to create that three-dimensional look. Como ya has observado, la clave aquí no es ser técnicamente perfecto, sino solamente cubrir con la pintura ambas orillas para que dé la apariencia de que hay más profundidad en el armamento que tiene, dando esa tercera dimensión. So now we can paint in with silver all of the battle damage on this second figure. This is going to take a while, so I'll let you watch the video. Ahora con color plata pintamos los daños de batalla que tiene la figura. Y como esto es largo, vamos a avanzar la cámara.
So this is the second figure, and I want it to look different than the first. So I am going to apply a bit of dirt or dust, and I'm gonna do that with the airbrush. I wanna spray at an angle from the bottom in thin layers to control the amount that I want to have showing or actually displaying the correct amount of dust on this figure. Así que en esta figura, que es la segunda, yo quiero que se vea diferente. Así es que con el mismo aerógrafo, ahora con un color café claro, vamos a añadir un polvo o tierra para que tenga ese aspecto diferente y lo haré en capas leves para controlar la cantidad que se va a resaltar. Haré lo mismo para los brazos. So now this is our second figure totally completed. Esta es la segunda figura ya completamente terminada. Vamos a repasar unos puntos. Let's take a look one more time at our parts list. We need the figure, the Batman. We also need to repaint those eyes. We also need a custom cape, and we need to use an airbrush for our shading, and we also need to mod the grapnel guy. Hagamos un repaso breve de los artículos necesarios. Necesitamos la figura de Batman. Necesitamos rectificar los ojos, y necesitamos una capa custom. Y a la vez, usar un aureógrafo para hacer las sombras necesarias y rectificar o modificar ese gancho. Now keep in mind that artist renditions will vary. Your figure may not look like either one of these two, but I'm glad I was able to show you two different versions. So now you can take it upon yourself to expand your technique or your look of your figure. I hope that this video certainly helps you out. I will now leave you with a finished video of those two items. And please like, comment, and subscribe. It certainly helps out the channel.